So in this example, what we're going to do is look at the graphs. And I am going to talk about each and every one of those definitions. All right? So it's going to be quite, quite a bit that we're going to be looking on. Um, but the first one, let's just go ahead and talk about the domain. So the domain, when we're looking at a graph, all right, and we're going to talk about algebraic domain next class period. But when we're looking at the domain of the graph, we're basically looking for the set of all x values that make up the graph. And so if we have a graph here, you know, standard way of, that we've set up graphing would be like the x and the you know, y axis. So if we're looking for the set of all values that make up this graph, another way of thinking about that is a little bit less informal. would just be saying, how far left does the graph go and how far right does the graph go? right? And it's also going to be important talking about included and excluded values. So you can see here, at the farthest left this graph goes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But the graph is actually not included at negative 5. Would you guys agree? Right? So my domain is going to be from negative 5. Since it's excluded, we're going to use parentheses. When something is included, we're going to use a bracket. So uh, actually, hold on, let's do this. Well, yeah. I saw you guys write this a couple different ways. Some students, I remember C did this. Negative 5 is less than y, which is less than. Now, how far right does this graph go? Well, this graph goes, it's going to continue. As it's going down, it's keep on going to the right. So it's going all the way to infinity. Now, infinity can also not be included because infinity is not actually a number that you can like grab. You can't say you have infinity amount of anything. So infinity is actually not a number. So it's never going to be included as well. All right, so this is something I've seen a lot of people doing, like so far in, in this Algebra 2 class. I just want to let you guys know that's perfectly fine. If you give that on a free response question, you'll get it right. However, that more likely than not is not going to be seen on a multiple choice test from me. Usually, we're going to write things in interval notation. OK, so really the same thing. We're just getting rid of the inequalities and the y and just saying from left to right. How far left, how far right. And so for the range, if the domain is the set of all x values, the range is basically setting the set of all y values. Basically, how low are we going to how high are we going? So if you guys look at this graph, you can say that this graph is going to be going down pretty far low, right? Down to like negative infinity. And it's going to go all the way up. It looks like it has a maximum y value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's a negative infinity. But 6 is actually a value on the graph. That's actually defined. So therefore, that's where we'll use our brackets. OK? So the next thing is we want to talk about um, continuity and discontinuity. And basically what we're looking at um, for continuity and disc discontinuity is first identifying if the graph is continuous or not. And if the graph is continuous, basically the easy way to do this, guys, is just to try to draw the graph without lifting up your pen or pencil. And if you can't do that, then it's discontinuous. And you can see, obviously, even though this is a hole, that's fine. You start here. To go from here to here, I have to lift my pencil up to get to the next graph, right? And I'm actually jumping from one graph to the next. So that's why this is called a, um, a jump discontinuity. So I will, um, so this is discontinuous. And just to let you know different uh, types of discontinuities. There are removable, and there are non-removable. So a lot of times, you will be asked, like, hey, you're telling me it's a discontinuity. It's kind of obvious. Tell me what type it is. And this will make more sense next, next unit when, I talk, when we talk more about non or talk more about removable. But basically, guys, when you just have like a hole, that is a removable discontinuity. So like this is technically a hole. These are what we call jump, because you're actually jumping from one function to the next, like one graph to the next graph. So it's like a jump. So that is called a non-removable. So a jump or a vertical asymptote. Those are going to be your non-removable discontinuities. Okay. Now, this is discontinuous, but where is it discontinuous, right? So a lot of times we're asking you know, on the graph, like, OK, yeah, it's not continuous. Where is it not, dis where is it not continuous? And you can see it's discontinuous at, looks like at negative 2 and at positive 2. Would you guys agree? So 
it's not, I want to make sure I label that at x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. So a lot of times we're talking about the position of where something is non -conti not continuous. And then obviously these are non removable. They're non removable or they're jumps. And again, guys, this will just come into it's a non removable discontinuity. It's a, actually, I'll just say non removable. All right, the next one is the increasing, decreasing, or constant. So, Um, basically, guys, let me, let me kind of go through a little bit of a thing here. If here's time and here's your speed, let's say you are about to get in a car, drive, and then get on the highway. So let's pretend like from, from the time you start your car to the time you get to the highway, you go at a linear, you know, you're accelerating, you know, speed up there. And then once you get up to the highway, you get up to 65 miles per hour, and then you coast. Right? So now you're just cruising along at 65 miles per hour, right? So if I was going to say when are, when, if I was going to say what, va what intervals are you increasing, what am I asking? Am I, am I asking how much are you increasing or I'm asking when are you increasing? The when. We're asking the when. And look at, look at what I wrote down in my definition. When is the graph going up, down, or constant? I'm not asking you how high you're going up, down, or constant. And this is where it gets very confusing. And this is where that one group, remember how they wrote the coordinate points? I said, OK, this is going to get confusing if the, you're going to use that type of notation. So again, guys, when we're looking at it, they're saying, when is this graph going up or down? A lot of students will say, you know, they'll talk about the y coordinates. We're not talking about the y coordinates. We're not talking about the speed from 0 to 65. We want to know how, what interval, how long does it take? For, when is it increasing from 0 to you know, 5 minutes? And then 5 minutes on, it's constant. All right. So when we're talking about increasing, decreasing intervals, we're talking about the when. All right. And the other get really confusing here. We're going to use interval notation like this. So it's not coordinate points. We're not talking about the we're not talking about the x and the y. We're just talking about the x values. When is x when when for what values of x is the graph going up? And if you guys look at this graph, you can say, well, the x values that it's going up is from so that's right, increasing. So the graph is going up from 1 2 3 4 5 from -5 to looks like from -2, right? From negative 5 to negative, so from negative 5 to negative 2, this graph is going up. You guys would agree. So we would just write it from negative 5 to negative 2. Now, to make things even a little bit more confusing, I understand negative 2 is included. And if you used a bracket there, I mean, it's not, I probably wouldn't mark you down wrong on it. But technically, you know, at given points, a given point is not increasing or decreasing. It's usually the interval of something is increasing to decreasing. So typically, we do not include endpoints when we're writing increasing, decreasing intervals. I know it's kind of confusing, but we'll practice it, all right? But just, work, just understand two things. I'm only talking about x values, not talking about y's. These are not points. I'm talking about the intervals of x values, as well as um, points of increasing, decreasing constant are not actually included. I know it's very confusing, but we'll practice it, OK? Decreasing, let's see if we can get decreasing. The graph is decreasing. Well, it looks like it's from this point going down, right? So this point is like from 2, 2. And then as far as I keep on going to the right, it's always going to be going down, right? So it's decreasing from 2 to infinity. And we can say the graph is constant from the x value negative 2 to 2. Anybody have any questions before I move on to the next stuff? No? Good. All right. So the next one is extrema. Now, extrema is a very simplified way for me to talk about max and mins. And there's a lot of actually answers to this. So if I was to write the notes, it would kind of take a while. Um, all right. So the easiest way to understand extrema is it's the max and the min. Is there a maximum height or a minimum height? So we look at this graph and we say, Hey, there's a maximum height there, right? Wouldn't you guys agree? There is a y value that is the highest of all highs. Yes? OK. 
So there's, an, uh, there's a couple different ways we can talk about that maximum value. Could we talk about that maximum value of what is that maximum might? Like how high is it? Y equals? Or we could also talk about where is it? Like what x value does the maximum occur? Would you guys agree? That would be x equals, correct? So there's a couple different ways we label, you know, just to be aware, guys, sometimes we'll say, like, where is the extrema? So therefore, you have to make sure you're talking about the x values. Or we might say, what is the extrema? What is the extreme value? Therefore, you need to talk about the y values. Sometimes we'll just say, um, you know, sometimes just using a coordinate point will be acceptable depending on the answer. So we'll just go for this. Now, we'll, I'll just use the coordinate point for here. The thing I want you guys to understand in this case is this is the absolute highest. There's nothing, there's no other y value greater than that, right? So whenever we have a, what we call an absolute maximum or minimum, we call that the absolute max and minimum, and it's an extrema. So we'd say an absolute max, and I'll just say at, I'm going to use the coordinate points, negative 2, 6. All right, now here's where it kind of gets a little tricky um, because there's this point is a you know minimum or a relative minimum. Uh, well, actually, this one doesn't work, but if I was I want to give you guys at least an, another example of a relative minimum. What if the graph, just real quick, if this graph looked like this? Okay, let me just change the graph for you in two seconds. Now. If the graph looked like this, you know like in my camera, right? I can zoom in, right? If you zoom in. So let's pretend we zoom in the camera just so the only thing you can see is this. Right? That's all you see. Now, in that snapshot, is there a maximum value? Yes, right? And what I mean by maximum value is a maximum value is every point to the left is lower than that maximum value. Every point to the right is lower than that maximum value, right? So if you can zoom in on a single point and notice that every point to the left is lower, every point to the right is lower, that is what we'd call a relative maximum. So there's absolute and there's relative. Absolute is the grand scheme of things, everything. And relative is just like little snapshot, little zooms in. Okay. Now, in the example I chose for you guys, we don't have any relative. Or now again, it could be a relative maximum or a relative minimum. Another way to understand that is kind of local, right? We're like local, so you're localized rather than in the absolute. Um, so that's another way that you can think about that. We don't have an example there, but I wanted to explain it to you guys. And again, I think we have. We have a couple examples of relative that hopefully you guys will get to. Now, the reason, now why doesn't this work then for the graph that I chose? Well, the reason is this is a constant function. If any point to the left lower than that maximum value, no. So it doesn't follow the definition. So there's no maximums there for every point to the left or to the right being there, OK? Um, boundness. So, I think in one of my, I think in one of my definitions that I was talking to you guys, I talked about the graph continues without bounds. Don't you guys see how this graph, as we it goes to the right, it continues going down without bound, right? It's not restricted by any means. Bounded is basically just a way to say talk about restrictions, but this graph does not go above a maximum value, right? So that's what we call bounded above. And really, guys, if you want to like make sense of it, you can just replace bounded with like restricted. It's restricted above. You can't go above a certain height. So when you have a graph that continues indefinitely without bound in both directions, that's unbounded. There's no restrictions. It's unbounded. If you have a graph that only goes as high or only goes as low, it's just bound. It's bounded above and bounded below, right? It's restricted on the top and the bottom. Does that kind of make sense? So a lot of times when I, you know get confused. I would just say, just replace the word bounded with um, restriction or restricted. Next one is M behavior. We're going to spend more time with M behavior. 
The only, the best way I can explain to you guys is, you know, where's the graph going? As you're, as you're reading the graph, right? As you read the graph to the right, where's it going? Up or down? That's really as simple as it can be. As you're moving the graph to the left, where's it going? Up or down? Now, it doesn't always have to be going up or down. It could actually approach a, a number as well. Or it could actually not have any end behavior. So as we read this graph to the right, you can, guys can see, rather than looking at our phones, we can see that the graph is going down, right? So we can just say the graph is falling, falling right. And that's the only end behavior we have. Because as I continue going to the left, what happens? The graph stops, right? There's no, there is no, as we're continuing going to left, there is nothing there. So there is no end behavior. And I'll show you, that's a very non-mathematical way to write end behavior. We'll talk about more mathematical ways next chapter. Yes? Um, can you over the thing again? Sure. So you can see that this graph is restricted about going any, more, any higher than 6. So it's restricted above a maximum value. So there's no, like, you're restricted. You can only go so high, okay. right? So it's restricted or bounded. You have a boundary. Basically, think you have a boundary for anything going above something. And then it would be like bounded below. Right. So like, here's an example of bounded below. That's bounded below, okay. right? If something is, um, you know, so here's an example of something that's unbounded. No restrictions up or down, right? Um, here's an example of something that is, you know, bounded above and below, right? This is bounded on the top and the bottom. So that's kind of like a definition um, for you. The x and y intercepts, um, obviously, guys, that's just where the graph crosses. So you can see that there's only one x intercept. That is at right here because this point is undefined, right? It's an open circle. So we could say the x intercept is at um, 3 comma 0. You could also write at x equals 3. And the y-intercept is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'd say 0 comma 5. Or you could say y equals 5. OK, so you can give the x value of where the intercept is. Or you could give it as a coordinate point. That's perfectly fine. I think it's really important to look at the coordinate point and to understand that the x-intercept is when y equals 0, and the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. And last but not least, guys, is even odd. So kind of getting to our point here. Even and odd basically depends on symmetry. If a graph is symmetrical about the y-axis, as this one is, it's even. It's called an even function. If a graph is symmetrical about the origin, and what I mean by that is if you can reflect it about the x and the y-axis, like think about this, guys. If you take that graph and you flip it about the y-axis and then flip it about the x-axis, do you get the exact same graph? Right? So it's symmetrical about the origin. That is what we call an odd graph. Now, the graph that I chose, does this have any symmetry? No, so it's neither. It's not even nor odd. All right. Now, again, guys, hopefully you wrote down at least some things. I will leave this on the board for you to kind of review, and I'll also walk around. But what I'm going to do for this 